In this video, we're going to be discussing the controversial Lucas engine oil stabilizer, as well as the destruction of the week. Hey guys, this is Josh with the Update Channel. Now, historically on my channel, we have shied away from controversial subjects. Religion, politics, never really come up in our discussions, and I like to keep it that way. But I've decided to go out on a limb and go way past the controversy that those two subjects hold and discuss aftermarket engine oil additives. Now, we're going to be picking one engine oil additive to kind of focus on, but that's not to just pick on them or to highlight them specifically. It's just because they're probably the most well-known and the one I get asked about the most, and that is Lucas Oil Heavy Duty Engine Oil Stabilizer. Now, of course, this discussion will apply to pretty much any aftermarket engine oil additive, whether it's SDP or Marvel Mystery Oil or any of the other products out there that are offered. But I want to pick this one because it's one I used to use in my youth, and it's, like I said, the one that I get asked about the most. What I want to do is take the claims that this product makes, and then we're going to use our brain, and we're going to analyze every single claim they make and discuss it in detail and see if it even makes sense. Then you can apply what the discussion was to the product itself and decide, hey, you know, maybe I'll try this product or maybe I won't try this product because it does something. It's not pure snake oil like some people claim where snake oil was something that it wasn't even made of snakes and it didn't cure everything. But the Lucas product does things, but maybe it doesn't do everything they say. So let's get into the discussion and see what I think about this product. Okay, so here goes. We have a basically a sales brochure from Lucas, world famous Lucas heavy duty oil stabilizer here. Now, if you go to the key benefits section, there's actually nine things listed. But if you look at the last one, it's not for use in Ford Power Strokes. So that's not really a key benefit, I guess, unless you're a Chevy guy. But Let's go in the actual benefits and we'll work our way down. So let's get into the first one. And that our claim is extends oil and engine life. Now notice there's no number or anything referring to a citation. What do I mean by a citation? I don't mean a vehicle Chevrolet made in the 80s that was possibly not the best vehicle ever made, but what I'm referring to is this is quite a claim. Now, there's a famous quote that says something that is asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. Now, I'm not saying that we are going to dismiss this without evidence, but I don't see any evidence presented here. I don't see a study, survey, anything really. Um, there's nothing, there's no notes on the bottom. I went on their website for quite a while also, and I look for studies, either independent or even by Lucas themselves to see you know, all these claims they make, what's to back it up? Is it just their word? Now, there's lots of testimonials. And testimonial, all that means is basically someone said this. There, there's no real hard evidence behind that. You could find a testimonial that someone had lunch on the moon with Bigfoot, aliens, and Abraham Lincoln. Does that mean it really happened? Well... I wasn't there to see it, but that could be a testimonial. So I would really like to see studies. Extends oil and engine life. Now, of course, oil life, oil breaks down over time. Of course, engines wear over time. And what do they mean by extends the oil life exactly? Are they saying you'll get a lot more mileage between oil changes? What interval? What Are you supposed to go an additional 50% over your oil change interval? Why? What's the rationale behind this? The oil is thicker now because what is Lucas oil additive? Let's be honest. If you actually look into it, it's basically a base stock 60 weight oil. Not a multi-grade, a base stock 60. And then they have some sort of sticky petroleum-based additive in it that makes it more tacky. And that's pretty much it. There's really not a lot of other additives in this oil additive itself. So why would adding this extend your oil life? It, it, to me, makes no sense at all. 
Base oils, you know, anything you buy in a jug, 10W30, Shell, whatever, Quaker State, Penn's oil, is going to have a actually a quite comprehensive additive package with it already. A good understanding of what's actually in lubricants already as far as additive packages. Machinery Lubrication has very good articles on this, and it's a free website. Check out their lubricant additive uh, section. Very informed information on what's in just your normal oils as far as engines transmissions that type of thing you'll know more than almost everyone does on what oil additives actually are now the additives break down over time as you run the engine and they break down faster at higher temperatures and severe duty applications but this one doesn't say why it extends the oil life to me it would actually be diluting the additive package in the oil so it would probably actually shorten the oil life in my opinion now extends engine life. Basically, they're just saying there that it causes less wear. So we'll get into that more specifically because they kind of have that broken down more specifically in here. So let's get to number two, which is a lot more specific. So it says virtually eliminates dry starts and excessive wear. Now, what is a dry start? Well, a dry start is a bad thing and it is a real thing. That is where your engines typically sat for a long time over a week generally and you start it up now what does this do well of course gravity affects everything and over time it's going to pull oil out of the top of the engine out of your bearings and into the oil pan which means there'll be less oil to feed to your bearings at startup when it's it's why well, oil is always critical but especially at startup because there's less oil in the bearings already now People seem to think that the bearings are dry. That is not the case. I even have a video here to show that that's not the case. What we have here is a CAT 6.6 .6 liter diesel engine. Now this engine has been drained of oil for over a week. It's also been rotated by hand several times and sitting on the flywheel housing, which should have caused most of the oil to drain back. Look at that. It still has good amount of oil to the bearings. It's rare to actually have no oil in the bearings anymore, but there will be less than an engine that just shut down. So reduces dry starts. Does it actually do that? Probably actually. Uh, it is a lot thicker, but also it has that real tackiness that almost like a glue-like texture to it. And that will actually probably keep oil, or especially this Lucas stuff, in the bearings better than just straight oil, which of course is thinner than this since this is a thicker base oil. Now that is a good thing. You'll have better lubrication. That also means that this is actually probably a very good assembly lubricant. If you're building an engine, instead of just using engine oil, which a lot of manufacturers say is fine, and it is fine. I build engines using just 15W40 engine oil all the time. This would be a good assembly lube, especially if it's something that's not going to start right away because it will hold on most likely to the bearings better than just engine oil will. So that is a benefit, but two-edged sword there. So that since this is a lot thicker, let's say it's very cold outside and you haven't started your vehicle in a while. This will have a little bit more oil in the bearings and in the oil system just due to its thicker nature and higher tackiness. But once you start the engine, it's going to be trying to move this oil through the engine to get more oil to the bearings. Now, do you think this oil flows better or worse than a standard grade oil, like a 15W40? Well, of course, this is gonna flow way worse. It's much thicker. Also, you're gonna have a much higher pressure differential across the oil filter because the oil filter has a bypass when it reaches a certain pressure differential. So you'll be actually getting less filtered oil to your bearings, slower, with the Lucas product. However, the oil that's already there will probably provide better lubrication than just the base oil. So two-edged sword there. So the other part of this claim is excessive wear. Now, engines wear for lots of different reasons and not all wear is bearing wear, but the, what they're referring to here, obviously when it says excessive wear, they must be referring to bearing wear. Most of the wear in an engine over time is bearing wear, but there is other wear. There's valve recession, um, your injectors wear over time. Of course, they don't typically have oil going to them. So you can't make a blanket claim that this will just reduce excessive wear. I'd like them to be specific here and say 
you know, our study found bearing wear, blah, 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 blah. But of course they don't say that. But of course their point is to sell more of this stuff, not necessarily to make your engine run forever. So reduces excessive wear. I'd like to see documentation on that. I bet it does not do that, but eliminate dry starts. I wouldn't say it eliminates it. It probably is a better lubricant at startup. However, worse overall in cold conditions at startup because it's much thicker. So if it were me, I would just run standard oil when it comes to the dry start conditions. But anyway, let's get on to the next one. Now this one is probably one of the actual benefits that is the best for Lucas Oil, and that is reduces smoking, leaking, knocking, and blow by. So all of these things are different things. I hate that they lump them all together, but let's address them individually. So engine smoke, uh, there must be referring to exhaust smoke here. Many causes of this, uh, it's not just burned oil, although ben burned oil is a very common occurrence in engines that are typically worn out or have a problem. But also you can have fuel burn, coolant burn. It's not just burning oil. So if you do have an engine that's burning oil, this may actually help with that because it's thicker, so less oil is going to have a chance to either pass the valve seals into the cylinder or pass the piston rings and get into the cylinder just due to the nature of it being a lot thicker. So it may reduce smoking. Leaking, same thing. It's a thicker oil. A leak is any time oil in the crankcase is getting out of the crankcase. So you have a gasket that's not sealing anymore generally. This is a thicker oil, which means it's going to be harder for it to get through that leaky seal. So it may reduce leaking. Knocking. Knocking, knocking is basically a rattling or any noise in the engine. This will probably reduce that because knocking is a bad thing. It means something's worn out, something needs replaced. This is not going to fix that condition. You should fix the condition not just put this in and keep running the machine. If you have a worn out rod bearing, for example, and it knocks, or a bad camshaft lifter, you are not gonna fix it by running this. However, this will dampen the sound because it's a thicker oil, so it's going to help fill up those larger gaps in the bearings or in your valve train and dampen the sound. So that it may sound like the knocking's gone away, but you haven't fixed the problem, you've just dampened the sound. Now this gets to probably the biggest problem with Lucas. Now we've discussed that it's very thick compared to most engine oils. Some car engine oils are zero W20, they're almost water, and water viscosity that is, they're still oil. And that's because modern engines, especially gasoline engines, have very, very, very tight clearances between most of their bearings. Now, how thick, is a piece of paper. Any guess? I'm sure some of you know. It's about four thousandths of an inch. The bearing clearances on some vehicles now is one thousandths of an inch. That means this piece of paper, this normal paper, is four times thicker. This is four times thicker than the bearing clearance. There is not a lot of room for the oil to be feeding to your cam bearings, your crank and rod bearings, especially on newer vehicles. That is probably the biggest knock I have against this product is it's, it is a thickener. It's thicker oil and it's very tacky. Now you're gonna tell me you're gonna dump this in something that's supposed to be running a zero weight oil and it's not gonna affect anything. Let's say you do have a knock going on and you dump this in the engine. Maybe the knock goes away. That's because there was damage and it's now has a larger gap generally in that worn out bearing. What about the other bearings? What if they weren't damaged? They're most likely not getting the correct flow of oil due to it being the wrong viscosity now. Biggest problem I have with this product. So it basically makes your oil thicker. It can band-aid problems, but it can create its own problems by band-aiding other problems. So. But keep that in mind. Let's go back to the last one. Uh, blow by. Blow by is just the amount of fumes that get past the piston rings generally, or even past your valve guides. And 
it creates pressure inside the engine and it blows out. Now, most vehicles now actually recirculate the blow by into the combustion chamber, so you never see it, but older diesels and gasoline vehicles would dump it to atmosphere, so you could actually see it. And the more blow by, generally it's a condition, it tells you the state of your cylinders most likely. And it also helps you can see how worn out the engine is. So more blow by generally means the engine's more worn. Will this affect it? Possibly, because gets back to this is a thicker oil, probably would help keep some of that blow by in the cylinder, because remember you have oil coating the cylinders, the pistons going up and down inside the cylinder. So would this reduce blow by? Possibly. Um, no study though, so we don't really know. But all those, it can help with those, but it creates its own problems by helping with them. So on to the next one. Okay, so this one is pretty much 100% accurate, I can say. It raises oil pressure. Great, right? More oil pressure, better? No, not necessarily. So every engine, of course, uses engine oil and it pumps it throughout to mostly the bearings, but it also uses it for many things. It cools down the cylinders. It helps wash away combustion byproducts off the cylinder walls. It's also going to your gears. Pretty much everything in the engine has oil all over it. Some of it is directly fed, like all your bearings and pretty much all your valve drain, your gears. Well, gasoline vehicles don't generally use gears, but I mostly work on diesel engines, which use a gear train generally um, for timing the engine. And that's mostly where the oil is going to. Now, there's a range, a normal range for oil pressure on newer engines, and it generally drops over time because oil pressure is created by the oil pump moving a volume of oil and then having a restriction where the oil has to get out. And where that restriction is, is generally the bearings. Now the bearings do wear over time and as the gaps get wider or the bearings wear, you'll slowly lose oil pressure. Now a weak oil pump can also cause this, but generally it's the bearings themselves. So if you put a thicker oil in, you're gonna raise your oil pressure because you've now increased the viscosity, which means it's harder for that oil to get through the bearings. So is this going to raise your oil pressure? Of course it is. It's, it's a thickener. Is that good though? Not really. You don't like more. If you have 50 PSI of oil pressure, let's say you have an ISX Cummins. If you had 70, is it better? N no, no, it's not really. Not in a sense of what is the purpose of the oil pressure? The purpose of the oil pressure is to get the correct viscosity oil to the bearings at all times. As long as there's a good amount of pressure and you're in your normal operating range, the older oil, or not the older oil, but the, the oil is constantly being cycled through the bearings and going through the oil system. Artificially raising the oil pressure doesn't mean the bearings will last any longer. It doesn't mean the engine's gonna have lower operating temperatures or the, the oil pump's gonna last any longer. If anything, oil pump were, the oil pump would last less long because it's having to work harder. The pressure that's generated in the oil system is created by the oil pump and the restriction, but that takes energy out of the engine to pump that oil. The higher the pressure, the more work the oil pump's having to go through. It's actually drawing more horsepower out of the engine to just create more pressure, to pump this thicker oil throughout the system. So does this stuff raise oil pressure? Sure does. Is that a good thing? No, not really. Now, if your engine has bad oil pressure, meaning low below specifications, and you put this stuff in there, will it bring it back into specification? Maybe, depending on how bad the problem is. Let's say you're running 10 PSI of oil pressure and you dump this in and now you're 30. Engine's fixed, right? No, no, the problems are still there. You've just artificially increased the oil pressure by running a thicker oil. You still need to find out why is the pressure low in the first place? Do you have a worn out oil pump? Do you have bad bearings? There's something else going on. Is the block cracked internally or something like that? Plug the oil filter. Fix the problem, don't band-aid it. The next one, lowers engine temperature. Uh, engine oil temperature, coolant temperature, exhaust gas temperature. 
intake air temperature, there's a thousand, well, maybe not a thousand, but there's several different engine temperatures here. I'm gonna assume they're talking about engine coolant temperature or the engine oil temperature. I, I, this one's really stressing me to try to think how this product could lower your engine operating temperature. In order to lower the engine operating temperature, you literally have to produce less heat in the engine or to increase the cooling efficiency of the cooling system. This is oil, an oil thickener. If anything, it makes the oil pressure higher, which means the oil pump has to work harder, which means it would run hotter. It's not like this is a better conductor of heat energy than engine oil, unless it's, is it magic or something? The coolant temperature is regulated by your thermostats and then your fan on temperature and your radiator. So I'm not sure if they're referring to the coolant temperature or the engine oil temperature. I, I don't see how, I don't see how that's even possible. If anything, it's so sticky that generally a thinner oil as it splashes on the cylinder walls is going to remove heat from the cylinder walls quickly. Whereas this one is a lot thicker. It would be slower to draw down from the cylinder walls and it would probably not cool the cylinder walls as fast, I would think, just due to its higher tackiness and being a lot thicker. I, I do not believe that one. It would be nice to have a study saying that, but okay, on to the next one. Will not sludge or varnish. Okay, so sludge, we'll just sludge or varnish. Um, basically, that's like a residue that's left over generally on people that don't service their engine or they've got something going on like coolants getting into the oil, um, very humid conditions all the time, the engine's not being operated up to temperature. Basically residue is being left behind on the engine components. It's bad. Um, it's usually lack of maintenance. I, I bet if you ran this stuff in your engine for 100,000 miles and never changed the oil, it, it would leave sludge and varnish. Uh, anything will break down over time. I, I don't see how this would not, like saying it would never do that. Um, I mean, I see a study. Um, let's see. Okay, so th these next two, are they're basically one. So instead of saying it, we had eight key benefits, we really have seven. So it says for use in any engine, gasoline or diesel. I mean, if it was really any engine, they mean turbines and natural gas engines, stuff like that. Compatible with all grades of motor oil, conventional and synthetic. Now, if you read it here too, now it doesn't say it on this page too, but it also talks about putting this in your transmission, your differentials, um, pretty much everything except drinking it. And I, this reminds me of one of those tools you see like a cheap tool place that has like, it's this big and it does 4,000 different things, but it doesn't do any of them particularly well at all. It's almost useless. But it's something like, hey, that, that might work. How can one product work in gasolines, diesels, mix with synthetics, conventionals, uh, motor oils, you can put it in your transmission, you can put it in your differential, any type of engine, new engines, old engines, and, and it works on all of them. It's a panacea. That Claims like that really irritate me because generally things that work really well work very specifically. You know, if you have a 9 16th headed bolt, what's better, a 9 16th wrench or a crescent wrench? A proper 9 16th wrench is almost always better than a crescent wrench. It's, it's, it's more specific. It's for a specific item. This thing, something that works in everything probably doesn't work well in anything. My opinion. So, we have broken down all of the key benefits of the Lucas Oil. So now if someone asks me about it, I can put them in this video. So what are my takeaways? If you have a worn out engine with no oil pressure and it smokes and it leaks all over the place, maybe give this stuff a try. It might help. It probably will help some of those symptoms. It won't fix the problems, obviously. Would I put this in a new vehicle, especially under warranty? No, no, I would never do that personally myself. Um, probably makes a very good assembly lubricant 
due to its tacky nature. Uh, it might work in one particular application, maybe a manual, one specific model of manual transmission or something due to its thickness, but to tell you the truth, go with your manufacturer recommendations. Also, I brought from Cat. Do they recommend additives like this? Let me see. Wouldn't you know it? Cat does not recommend the use of aftermarket additives in oil. Aftermarket additives are not necessary in order to achieve the maximum service life of the engine. So that does it for our Lucas oil additive discussion here. If you saw my previous video and you comment anyone won the hat, here are the three winners. We had CTX50 and has commented, I would dig one of those hats since you'll be rebuilding my 6NZ next year. Thank you. Please email me at adeptape at yahoo.com if your name is called here. So he won a hat. Next person is Alan Barr or Bear. I believe it'd be Barr. I want to win a hat. You did. So email me. And last but not least, we have Bradley Holwinski. I hope I said that right. Hey, Josh, I'd love a hat. You won one. So email me and I'll get those. Uh, I'll get Western States. I'll get them mailed out to you next week. How about a little destruction of the week? This video is already 14,000 hours long, so why not make it a little longer? So what's wrong with this? Well, it's a Perkins engine. Oh, wait, no. That's not what's wrong with it. It seems to be missing a very critical engine part there. Hmm. Almost like the valve stem's gone. Wonder where it could have been. You go to the underside, I'm gonna get the cylinder head off, and oh, yeah. Ate the valve, not very good. Of course, the head is destroyed. What do our pistons look like? Well, number six, there's pieces of metal in the piston. Number five, number four, what does number three look like? That's, uh, yeah, Lucas is not going to fix this particular problem. Um, Unfortunately, going to need a lot more expensive fix than that. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.